this is Frank Sinatra. And this is Jack Daniels Sinatra Select, which came out 14 years after Frank Sinatra passed away. Frank wasn't drinking this. No, Frank was drinking good old number seven. Or was he? Not exactly. There's a lot to unpack here. My name is TJ Gamble and you've tuned into Bruzel. In this video, I'm gonna taste Jack Daniels Sinatra Select, judge it on five different criteria, assign it a Bruzel score, and see how it stacks up against the other whiskey I've reviewed. If you don't know who Frank Sinatra is, you're probably not old enough to be drinking Jack Daniels. Frank rose to fame in the 1950s and was really known for his distinct singing style and smooth voice. Just Google it. You've probably heard some of his music even if you don't recognize the name. Supposedly, back in the 1940s, Frank was introduced to a hard to find and little known brand, Jack Daniels, while out drinking with some celebrity friends like Jackie Gleason in a popular bar in New York City, and he instantly fell in love. He used to refer to it as the nectar of the gods, and he drank it Frank's way, which was three cubes of ice, two fingers of Jack Daniels, and a splash of water. As far as I can tell, Frank never was a paid spokesperson for Jack Daniels, but based on him popularizing the bottle, Jack Daniels really crafted the image of the whiskey for the tough guys and the mavericks, and it's still the go-to staple for celebrities and rock stars to this day. Frank Sinatra passed away in 1998. 14 years later, Jack Daniels worked with Sinatra Enterprises, the company that owns Frank's name, image, and likeness, to release Sinatra Select in 2012. For this release, they supposedly cut deep grooves in the oak barrels to give it a more oaky flavor, but then they blend that with old number seven and release it at 90 proof instead of old number seven's 80 proof. Neither one of these have an age statement on it, but are supposedly four to five or six years old, depending on where you get your information, and both use the traditional Jack Daniels mash bill of 80% corn, 8% rye, and 12% malted barley. What's interesting here is that Sinatra would have been just drinking old number seven, not Sinatra Select. But what's in this bottle is actually much closer to what Frank fell in love with back in the 50s. In 1987, Jack Daniels took the proof of old number seven from 90 proof down to 80 proof. And although I can't find any evidence to back it up, the fact that they claim this has more time in the barrel to make it more like the old Jack Daniels makes me think they also cut the age down just a little bit. So what this bottle is supposed to represent it's what old number seven used to taste like back when Frank was drinking it, which means it has a bit more oakiness, a little more spice, and a higher proof point. Jack Daniels is owned by Brown Foreman, which also owns brands like Old Forester and Woodford Reserve. Now this is technically not a bourbon. This is what's considered a Tennessee whiskey. And we'll get into more detail when we do the old number seven review coming up here pretty soon. So let's take a look at the bottle. On the front, crafted for bold flavor and exceptional smoothness. Jack Daniels Sinatra Select. Bold, smooth, classic Tennessee whiskey distilled and bottled by Jack Daniels Distillery, Lynchburg, Tennessee. And this comes in at 90 proof. On the side, it simply reads, special edition. On the back, Sinatra Select. This is a gentleman's drink. This is nice. With Frank Sinatra's signature, a classic whiskey crafted to honor Frank Sinatra's timeless good taste and 50 year friendship with Jack Daniels. So no real transparency on the bottle other than Frank Sinatra likes Jack Daniels. MSRP on these are about 130-ish dollars, although they can go up to double that on the secondary market. And this is not a super easy bottle to find. I see one every once in a while, but I might run into one or two of them a year. As I said, we're gonna judge this bottle on five different criteria, but before we do that, it really helps me out if you'll hit the like button on this video. Maybe consider subscribing if you haven't done so already. Also, your memberships here on YouTube and Patreon really help us take this channel to the next level. We also have a free Discord for folks just hanging out and talking about whiskey. If you're interested in that or any of these things, as always, Links to these are in the description. Also, if you want to help my bourbon budget, you can get cool things like our horse collector shirt at bruzel.com. That's enough talking, time to get to drinking. Before we get into the judging, let's try it Frank's way. A little ice, a couple of fingers of Jack Daniels, and a little splash of water. Definitely opens it up and you get a lot more of that oaky nuttiness that you get from Jack Daniels anyway. So it just kind of accentuates the flavors that are already there in a bottle of Jack Daniels. So I see how you could like it that way, but we're here to drink it neat. The first criteria is aroma. There are no distiller's notes for Sinatra Select, so we're just gonna have to figure it out on our own. The aroma on this is actually very subtle. Like there's nothing 
really distinct about it. You gotta really get your nose in the glass. But what's there is pleasant. It's subtle, but it's got that kind of interesting nuttiness to it. Overall, I think the nose is a six, although it's just not quite pronounced enough or it might get a couple of extra points there. So we give it a six. Second criteria, flavor. And it's classic Jack Daniels, but amplified, right? That 10 proof points definitely makes a difference on it, but it's still that kind of nutty dominated Jack Daniels. I do like it, but it's a five. The next criteria is complexity. And I do think this is where the extra proof points really start to shine versus a normal Jack Daniels. But I still think that kind of charcoal mellowing process and that nuttiness on the whiskey just dominate the palate all the way through. So I don't pick up as many subtle flavors as I would like on a whiskey this expensive. So I give it a five. The next criteria is mouthfeel. Like how thick is it? How well does it coat the palate? Definitely a step up from good old number seven here but still not spectacular. So again, it's a five. And the next criteria is finish. What does it leave you with once everything's said and done? And it kind of attacks your taste buds with that oaky nuttiness right off the bat. And then it mellows into a softness on the end, but like your taste buds are just spent at that point because that, those flavors up front are so intense and strong. It's not a bad finish, but it's not exactly what I'm looking for. So it gets a five as well. And that gives it a bruisal score of 26. Now, a lot of people want this out of 10. So we're gonna start adding an out of 10 score as well, but 26 makes it 5.2 out of 10. And that puts it right here tied with Eagle Rare and Woodford Reserve. Now, I did think that Eagle Rare's flavors were better than this Sinatra Select, but this kind of holds up in some of those measurables like mouthfeel and complexity, whereas Eagle Rare starts to fall off a little bit. And overall, means they have an even score. I know a lot of y'all don't like that Eagle Rare where it's at, but I try very hard not to be biased on these because I like Eagle Rare. I would say Eagle Rare is better than either of those two bottles that it's tied with if somebody on the street just asked me, but I'm literally sitting there grading each of those. Maybe at some point we'll have to do a blind against these and settle it once and for all. But for now, that's where Sinatra Select is at. If you've tried it, let me know your thoughts in the comments.